I'm in £40,000 of credit card debt. This is happening. The contracts have been exchanged. Hi everyone, welcome back to this channel. I'm Leah and today I'm talking a little bit about the help to buy scheme. So you might be thinking, what the hell is this scheme? How much money can I borrow? I'm gonna be trying to buy in London. How much can I get in London? So there's so much around this topic. And today I'm gonna to talk purely about eligibility for the help to buy loan. And secondly, about how much you can borrow from the government, depending on where you are. Lastly, I'll touch on how to apply for one of these and how you actually get the money when you have gone through the application, found a house, started uh, going through the process with a solicitor. I'll talk about how the money actually arrives to you as well. Editor Leah here, small spoiler, you never actually get the money, uh, your solicitor does, but you'll find out later. So firstly, what is the help to buy equity loan? Basically, it's money that you borrow from the government, which is free for the first five years, and this is money towards the deposit of your house. When I say free, I just mean interest free. Obviously, you will have to pay this money back, uh, at some point but for the first five years that is a zero percent interest the government don't want it to be impossible for young people to get a property and own a home so this is why they're offering the scheme it is actually going to be changing in 2021 so everything i'm talking about now will apply up until march 2021 and then there'll be new rules it'll be a watered down scheme so right now is a really good opportunity and time to look into this scheme and know what money is available to you because it will be changing soon. So eligibility, what does the house need to be? It needs to be a new build home and a new build home is anything that has been built or renovated or converted in the last two years. So it's gotta be a new build. Also, when you're searching for properties, there's usually a little toggle you can click if you're searching on say Rightmove or Zoopla, where it says, show me help to buy properties. These are new builds that are in collaboration with this scheme. So you wanna look out for those in case you're looking and then you find something, but it's not eligible for help to buy and you're just wasting your time. It has to be no more than 600,000 pounds or 300,000 pounds if you're buying in Wales. So £600,000 is the max and it might sound like a lot of money but if you're someone who's looking in London you'll find that there's not actually a lot you can get for £600,000 in London. Perhaps a two bed flat you could get for £600,000. It's much much harder if you're in London so I'll touch a little bit as we go along about how much money you can borrow there compared to the rest of the UK because it does all vary. It must be the only house that you own so you can't have two or three houses to your name and try to use this scheme. It's not available to you. The purpose of this scheme is to help new first time buyers get on the property ladder. After you buy this property, uh, you're not allowed to sublet it or rent it out. That's not what it's for. It's for your primary place of residence, the PPR as they call it. Don't use this money and then get renters in and be like, yeah, I'm making loads of cash because I've rented out this house that the government have helped me buy. Because if you get found out, then that could be bad. Yeah, I should probably go to jail for that. I don't know, don't quote me, but don't do it. And if you're applying in Wales, you must be able to prove that you cannot afford this home. Uh, I think that's a little bit different in the UK. You don't have to like prove that you absolutely can't afford the 25% deposit, whereas in Wales you do. So how does it work? You get a loan, a loan of up to 20% in the UK, or up to 40% in London. For Wales, it's also 20%, and for Scotland, it's a maximum of 15% that you can borrow. So this is towards the deposit of your home. So that's why people say, if you've got 5% saved of the purchase price of a property, you might be eligible for this scheme. If you're buying a new build house that's with the help to buy scheme, and it costs 200,000 pounds. 5% of a 200,000 pounds house is 10 grand, so you need to have that saved, and then the government would lend you 20%, which is 40,000 pounds. Therefore, you have a combined pot of 50,000 pounds towards a 200,000 pounds house, if that makes sense. That 40,000 pounds that you've borrowed from the government doesn't cost you anything for five years. In the sixth year, you'll be charged 1.75% interest on the loan you borrowed from the government. And then in the years after that, it will probably rise due to the rate of inflation. And it also on the government website, it says 
plus one percent on top of that but your help to buy advisor will probably help you with setting up the payments on that you won't be left alone when it comes to that kind of thing it's worth remembering when you're paying back a loan that the interest rate does not count towards paying back the actual money you've borrowed interest is the money on top of the money you've borrowed for example if i was to lend you a hundred pounds but i said here's a hundred pounds over time i want you to pay it back to me but you're going to need to pay me back 110 pounds in total the 10 pounds of that is like the interest and the 100 pounds is the like capital it's like the government are a mortgage lender to you so you're kind of paying off two mortgages if you think about it you got the 75 percent that you'd be borrowing from any of the help to buy lenders as in banks and then you've got the money that you borrowed from the government free of interest for five years and then you're going to be charged interest from the sixth onwards so it's kind of like you're paying two mortgages here like one here to the bank and one to the government right let's keep going are you still with me i hope you are you must pay back this loan in 25 years so if you don't pay it back whilst you're still living there you will have to probably sell the house in order to pay it back. When you're paying back the loan, it's gonna depend on how much your home is now worth. So if you borrowed 20% from the government on a 200,000 pounds house, that means you borrowed 40,000 pounds. If you come to sell that property and it's now worth 250,000 pounds, so the capital appreciation of the house has gone up, house prices rise every year uh, or they go down, and that house is now worth 250,000 pounds, you actually owe back 20% of 250,000 pounds because you borrowed 20% of what it was worth then. So you now owe back 50,000 pounds. So that's something to think about, that's something to consider. You'd hope that with the capital appreciation going the way it is, that you'd get that equity from the home when you sell it and you pay it off. But you know, anything can happen and house prices can go down, things can crash. You probably wouldn't wanna sell your house at a time where the market was really low because you know, you just don't wanna do that. Something that the government website also mentions is that you can pay back part or all of your loan at any time. The only way I think of that being a possibility might be if you happen to come into a lot of money and you just decide that actually I'm just gonna pay off this loan. I borrowed 40,000 pounds from the government. You might happen to have inherited some money. Something might happen where you're able to pay off that loan in full. My advice would be to just pay that off ASAP because then it's done and then you don't have to worry about it in 25 years and think about maybe selling your house if you haven't paid it all off yet. It also says that the smallest payment you can make at a time is 10% of the value of the home. So for instance, if the house is now worth £220,000 at the time of paying back the loan, then 10% of that is going to be £22,000. So that'd be the minimum repayment you could make on that £40,000 loan of when you bought it at £200,000. I think they just say that so that you're not trickling in these random payments. I don't really know what other reason they have made a smallest repayment clause for. I don't know, but yeah. So next thing, how would you apply for one of these loans? The first thing you wanna do is you wanna contact your local help to buy agent. I think I might have called them a, I think it might have been like advisor. Yeah, your help to buy agent or advisor. There's usually one in every area and they can help you and they'll probably talk you through everything that I've just spoken about and then look at your earnings, see what you've already got saved, discuss with you whether you're gonna be putting down a 5%, a 10% or 15% deposit. The more deposit you can put down, the better, obviously, because then you will have a smaller mortgage with the more money you put down. So yeah, contact your local help to buy agent, get set up with them, get registered, and then the property search will begin. So separately, you wanna be applying for a mortgage. So whilst your help to buy agent can help talk to you about the equity loan from the government, they're not gonna sort out your mortgage for you. So you're gonna need to talk to a mortgage advisor about the 75% remaining if you're putting down the 25% deposit. So I hope that makes sense. You've got 5%, the government are giving you 20%, just say. There's still 75% 
worth of this property that you need to find the money for. So that's where the mortgage advisor comes in. There's two ways you can do that. You can talk to a mortgage advisor for free in the back of probably any estate agent's office. Just walk in and be like, I'd love to have a chat with your mortgage advisor. We're trying to buy our first home. Uh, we want to use the help to buy scheme, la de da da. And those mortgage advisors are free to talk to and they will help you. The other option is to go to a mortgage broker. The difference is, is that a mortgage broker has got more products available to them on the market, but they will charge you about 500 pounds fee for their time finding you the mortgage. It's free to have a chat to them, but just know that if you go ahead and get a mortgage through a broker, it's going to cost you about 500 pounds. So that's the difference there. I would definitely say it's worth talking to the free mortgage advisors in-house at any estate agent, uh, pretty much in the UK. They can always put you in touch with one. The mortgage advisor or the broker is gonna help give you information on which lenders uh, offer help to buy products. Just wait for that train. When I say help to buy products, I just mean any of the lenders, any of the banks, that are willing to lend to first time buyers that are using the help to buy equity loan from the government. Some of these banks include Halifax, Virgin Money, Barclays, NatWest, the Post Office, Santander, Nationwide, Building Society and TSB. So that could change, it's always worth talking to them and seeing what products are available and getting the ball rolling with that. It's quite a lengthy process when you talk to a mortgage advisor or a broker. They want a lot of information from you. They're gonna to want to know uh, all about your job, your income, what you've got saved, if you're in any debt. Don't be scared and don't withhold any information from them. You need to tell these people the truth because they're gonna be acting on your behalf when trying to get you a mortgage. And if you withhold any information, it could be like seen as mortgage fraud when you're trying to get a mortgage. So just be completely open and honest with them. If you're in 40,000 pounds of credit card debt, be like, I'm in 40,000 pounds of credit card debt. They need to know and the chances are they'll probably find out when they do credit checks on you anyway. So just worth telling them everything that you can. Last thing I wanna say is that the money from the government, which is up to 20% or 40% if you're in London, towards your deposit, you'll only get access to that money uh, after you've exchanged contracts with the seller of the home. So you won't actually see that money. The money's not gonna drop into your bank account. It's gonna drop into your solicitor's bank account and then they'll transfer that to the seller. So don't try and like apply for this and then just be like, yeah, I'm gonna blow 40 grand on a new car because you're not gonna see that money. It's gonna go to your solicitor and then they'll pay it to the seller. That's kind of how that happened. And that won't happen until after the contracts are exchanged. The reason for that is because the government don't just wanna start lending out money for houses until it's a done deal. And at the moment of exchange, in a buying houses world that is when it's like this is happening the contracts have been exchanged there is a legal contract here this house is being bought by these people i hope that makes sense i've tried to cover a lot of stuff here a website i would recommend which i'll leave in the description is the government uk website which is all about help to buy equity loan and then also this website here which is bankrate.com they've got a really good calculator so you could put in the purchase price of the property and then you could put how much deposit you've got available put the location in so if it's london make sure you put london in there so they can work out the 40 percent and then it calculates um how much your mortgage would be at certain fixed interest rates so it's just really worth looking at the reason why this is so helpful is because you know exactly how much money you would need from a lender when you're doing your mortgage applications if a mortgage lender says to you i'm willing to lend you 190,000 pounds not a penny more then you know that you'd be eligible for this because this is saying that you need 187. That's pretty good. So I, I really rate this website. I think it's really, really good. It shows you what your monthly repayments would be after that in line with inflation plus 1%. So definitely check that out if you're serious and I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you found that useful. And um, don't forget, I'm gonna be making a video on shared ownership and help to buy ISAs. I will stick it in a playlist and it will be linked up in the cards somewhere or in the description. 
Let me know if you've got any questions or comments. Thank you for watching all the way through. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Property Couple. I'm also at Leah Hats if you're interested in following me on there. Speak to you guys soon. Thanks for sticking around for those parish notices. That was a lot of stuff. Bye.